Welcome in. I am Dave McHugh. I'm joined by the president of COSIDA, if I have that correct, yes. Eric McDonald from Union College. And first and foremost, thank you so much for taking some Thanks time to for join me. me today. We appreciate it, it. In a lot of things, Division Three, it is rare to have someone from Division Three who's leading a major association of any kind, the NABC, you name coaches associations off the top of your head, COSIDA, et cetera. So this is a, certainly a unique opportunity for Division Three to have someone like yourself representing not only the division, but in charge of the whole COSIDA enchilada, as it were. <laughs> it's a wonderful opportunity. It's a dream come true, to be honest, to be able to serve 3,000 members, people whom you respect. Uh, it is their first opportunity or the first time that an NCAA Division III institution has a president of COSIDA. And it's a statement to our membership. Uh, we have 3,000 members from all over North America, including CIS in Canada, NAIA, and the three NCAA Division schools. And uh, since I have experience in NCA 1, 2, and 3, I think that helps uh, show that I have a broad aspect and a pretty good pulse of, of the membership. I was going to say, obviously, the D1 experience currently because of union hockey, which certainly has been successful as National of late. Champ, Just I I, I, yeah, exactly, I <laughs> exactly. Oh, you rub it in if you can. Um, so you certainly have that aspect of things, but obviously with a, a big Division Three aspect, too. With, with And you have everything. You've got the footballs. You've got the basketballs. You, you've got a lot of the big sports. So you, you definitely come from a, a point of view that is more well-rounded than, say, a, a good chunk of Division Three who might be a little bit more numbered less or don't have big sports and certainly don't have the D1. Well, our advantage, I think, is our market because we're in the capital uh, city of New York. Mm -hmm. So we have four televisions covering us. We have <laughs> three newspapers. So, yeah. And what's great is they don't just lock in on hockey or the football. They ha we have a large market with other schools and professional teams. But when they have a great feature like we did in a women's basketball player mm -hmm. from the Good Works program from a Division Three side, they do a feature on her. So we're fortunate with that. But we have a rich Division Three history. We started with our very first baseball game in 1860. Yes. So literally, they went from Cooperstown and went up to Schenectady and played a collegiate baseball. And by the way, I should point out, you also have one of the more unique town names, Schenectady, yes, New York, right. which, which is one of those that is fun for those of us who know how to say it. Um, when you talk about the coverage that you guys get, and obviously you talk about the experience that you have in the Albany area, when you try to then help out others, and obviously your role as president is to do that, how, what little tidbits do you take from your experience that can help somebody in a bigger market, smaller market, may not even have any coverage? What do you, what's kind of your message? Well, we know that the print media is challenged. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one issue at all. Uh, the small schools are the small markets and the large markets. Many of the Division three schools will just see it in the agate. You know? mm -hmm. So what they want are the features. And we're, we work specifically with the SAC group, the Student Athlete Advisory Committee groups, to find the features. That's where Division three student athletes get the most attention. And what's wonderful is the fact that we have President Emmer coming to meet with us here and talking about that's what he's looking for, the presidents and the athletic directors. So it's our job specifically at that level to find the features of those extraordinary student athletes and get them into a column or a TV feature. That's the coverage. The scores will be in the paper. They'll be on the website, but it's more about instead of just the face of the student okay. athlete on the website, we want to know who is that person and what do they do. That's certainly the message in Division Three, kind of the impetus behind the YD3 show and the YD3 hashtag and all of that. But that's something I'm starting to hear is resonating in the other divisions as well in the NCAA. The Division One is like, okay, sure, we're going to get on Sports Center with our big teams. We're going to we're going to get our you know our student athletes at attention if they decide to go pro or they have a big game. But I'm even hearing from the D1s like we've got some great stories of student athletes we also want to tell. So is that D3 experience helping out the D1s in some cases? Yes, very much so. And I, and I want to equate it to last year when we had the hockey run, and everybody now thinks of us that way. <laughs> the week that we had the hockey run and we were going, before going to Philadelphia, I went to Nashville for the women's final four. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't for Cosina as much as for a union student athlete named Amy Lawyer, mm -hmm. who did so much wonderful things that she got the ABC, WBCA Good mm -hmm. Works Program Award. Now imagine our alums seeing at halftime of the UConn game against yeah. Notre Dame to see her next to Purdue and Ohio State. Yeah. That's what that was about. So that was the most extraordinary week I had because it sent a message to our Division Three student athletes that you are important. We're thinking about you. 
This is extraordinary. It's not just about the D1 team. It's about you two. What is your message that, or, or what's your goal as president of COSIDA necessarily? What do you hope you can do to maybe improve the program if it needs improving? It, what do you want to do to help those in the organization? What, what are your, maybe your mantra as it were? Well, projects that I had been working on for the three years of VP includes COSIDA U, which I'm looking to hand off now and I hope will continue. <laughs> In a nutshell, we're working with over 300 sport management colleges throughout North America, and we're looking to find our future, as I call it. Sure. Make sure the SID and the professor of the sport management major get together and educate them about our profession. We have a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. in our business, and those kids really don't know about us. They know about ADs and coaches. The other is the SAC groups, finding the stories from those students, because a, a young lady won't walk into to my office and say, I have leukemia, this would be a nice story. <laughs> but her teammates will. Sure. And we find ways to raise money and to get awareness for that young lady, because they're all over the country at all divisions. I think this year, before I hand over the gavel to Judy Wilson, a very good friend of mine for the Mountain West Conference, I hope that the word advocacy will come into mind. And it's something that is still in the early stages, but finding ways to protect our positions, to ensure that our members who love what they do in this business stay in the business, to avoid the budget cutbacks that are looked at in mm -hmm. our area, because we're the ones that work for and serve the student athletes. And cutting back in our area is uh, it's very difficult. We understand budget constraints, but we also have to understand that any employee at an institution is working for the student. And if we lose those positions, those students suffer. A lot has certainly changed in the role of sports information director. We could start listing and, and spend 10 minutes of all the jobs or items that get put on an SID's shoulder at various institutions, but live, you know, doing statistics for games, writing game stories is not the be all and end all anymore. From your point of view, what has been, this is a really loaded question, what has been the biggest change, if there's only one, or what have been a group of the biggest changes that you've seen in this profession? The It's been 33 years, two years in the pro, so 31 in college athletics. The biggest change, both positive and challenging, is the website. To me, I think it's very challenging for the small shops, as we sure. say, and not just the D3s that have one or two people, one and a half, when they <laughs> turn. Right. but there are mid-majors in Division mm -hmm. One, where a women's basketball team will have to play Notre Dame, mm -hmm. but they only have four people sure. in their department. They don't have the 10 that others do. So the website, in the positive way now, gives attention to the women's tennis team that is equal to the football. There's her bio, learn about her. There's the statistics, the live stats and video and what have you. That's wonderful. The issue, of course, is that now you're doing it for 600 students. Yeah. And in our case, it's imperative as it is for an Ira Thor or Ann King or Dave Rath or others at the Division Three level to find a way to make sure that those pages are updated. So I think we really have a lot more time into the web uh, nowadays than we do in the past. I say, I look at the web as both the positive and then a, not a negative, but something that has really challenged our profession because we're locked at that desk. Mm. By being locked at that desk, we don't really know the student athletes. We just see their face. Sure. Uh, you certainly name dropped some of the bigger uh, names in, in the Division Three realms of the sports information, but you talk about retention. Um, I do notice that that's sometimes hard. How do you how do you keep people who are certainly passionate about this in the in the career when it's so easy to burn out? Well, partly I've done this as well as those who have left try to get back in, mm. and they make a call and say, you know, the the green pasture here it may be brown <laughs> on the other side. Yeah. And you don't know that until you get out of it. The two years I was in the pro, once in pro hockey, one in pro basketball, I really missed working with a variety of sports and the variety of, of personalities that you meet between 18 and 21. And I always <laughs> say, we get older, they don't. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but what we do to keep them in is we have to see the passion. We have to, as veterans, have that passion. And those who have seen me, both sides of they see me in presentations, it's not an act. I love what I do. Mm. But I love Cosida and I love the people in it. And if you walk into the hotel and you're going to check into your room, give it two hours. 
because you're going to see somebody yeah. and see a face. Yeah. And now as a veteran, I want to be the person that goes to that rookie and spends time with them. Because when I came in, there were the Jack Sains and the Nick Vistas and our legends and our Mount Rushmore's did that for me. That's what our profession's about. We have to give back to them. We have to show them the positive bit. We're not going to be millionaires. Many of our people could earn hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they wouldn't enjoy it. They'd sure. wake up in the morning and they'd miss this. You have to wake up and love what you do. A tradition I have on Hoopsville is always give the final word to my guests. Obviously, it's not necessarily a Hoopsville interview, but I thought it was appropriate. Any final thoughts before we sign off that you want to tell those who may be watching this? Well, those who may not understand what we do, just understand that we do work for the student athletes, we work for the media, but we love what we do. If you're even thinking about this profession, make sure to let us know that because every year, I don't know about the economy being up or down, all I know is that we have hundreds of opportunities every year, an internship or full time, and it's a domino effect. This person may leave school A to go to B, and now A is open. And there's always people behind you by your side in our profession. We're dedicated, but we also take care of each other. So I'd hope you'd look at us. Sounds like a sales pitch, but it is. <laughs> well and done. For those of you that didn't know what we do, I think you understand now that next time you watch March Madness, or if you go to a local Division Three softball game, Look for that person. Have a chat with them because they love to be appreciated. They work very hard for the students, and they like to have a pat on the back now. And some of the good ones have really good information you didn't know about. Eric McDowell, Union, appreciate Thank it. You so much. Sports Information Director, nice. Course President for Gosada as well. Appreciate you taking the time.